Hello, this is Professor Billier at Worcester Polytechnic Institute, and I'm going to do a demo, about 10 minutes, about how to run a test using Blue Hill 3 software using an Instron 5544. Now, we've already logged into Instron and put our names in our logbook so I know who's using the computer. Uh, put on our personal protective gear, no gloves on the computer. Uh, put the grips in and tighten them. Uh, the Instron's already turned on, Blue Hill 3. I've already logged into. So now what I want to talk about first in part one is software programming, the specimen type measurements and test control, and I'll get into calculations and uh, graphs in the second part, another 10 minute video. So I want to do a uniaxial test. I have a piece of leather in the grips uh, already. I've already balanced the load cell before I put them in the grips and zero the extension, but I'm going to have to put a tear load on before I do the test. But now I want to do a uniaxial tensile test. So I can either choose method or test. I'm going to choose test. I'm going to select, I can choose here, a uh, test that's already been used recently, or I can browse. And uh, I'll do a browse. And on our computer, it's under a very long uh, trail of, of these different folders, but under Instron Examples in Blue Hill, once you get there, there are some standard Instron examples, and I'll pick just a tension example here. Open to file, and I'm going to piece a leather here. Um, and once I choose that, then I come where I can also look at the administration reports and methods. So I, I could also have gone into just methods to define this test. So under methods, uh, I have a bunch of different prompts on the left here, uh, and I'm going to start from the top and go down and only hit the ones that are important to run uh, a test. And then again, for the calculations, I'll do another video uh, that you can watch. So first thing is, what kind of test is it? Uh, attention test, and I can use different types of units. I'll use uh, metric units this time. Uh, I can select the sample. There's a bunch of notes, not really that important for now. Uh, I can put number inputs and text, but for the specimen, I need to pick what shape it is, rectangular or circular. Mine happens to be rectangular, uh, none of these other types, so I'll choose that. I could also put a specimen label, which will come up every time. I'm not going to do that now. I can also put notes and different types of inputs here for the specimen. You can play with that. For measurements, the standard measurements are going to be time, extension, and load. That's what the machine can actually measure. There's virtual uh, measurements such as tensile strain. As you notice here, it's a, a virtual measurement. It's a calculated measurement by taking the extension and dividing by the initial length, which is defined by the user. You could also do others. As I mentioned, I'm not going to really talk about calculations, but these are calculations where the calculations are made. Are they made at the maximum load, um, at break, etc.? And I'm just going to use the standard ones that are already uh, programmed in here. And I go down to test control. Here's the important part for this uh, video is you have to set what is the type of test you're going to do and when is it going to stop. So for this test, it will start with the start button. That's the only option we have um, with, with this because we don't have any other lines hooked up. We're going to measure strain using extension. We don't have any extensometers that are connected, so we can't use anything else for now. Uh, those are more advanced types of tests. In a whole separate video, I'll talk about all types of pre-tests uh, pre you can do, both static preloads and dynamic pre-cycling. So now getting to the crux, what is the test? Generally, you're going to do a ramp test. You can do ramp with extension control, or you could do a load control, or stress control, strain control. Um, Extension control is going to be the most stable kind of control because it doesn't depend upon your sample. If you have a stiff sample uh, or a soft sample, you'll get different types of control when you use load control. And it's a screw-driven machine, so it is more stable under extension control. Pneumatic machines can work better under load control. Depending on the sample size, you'll pick a rate. 10 millimeters per minute is pretty good for a uh, pretty stiff material. This leather is pretty soft, so I'll give it uh, 20 millimeters per minute. You have to hit enter to, uh, to have it recorded. You could do uh, separate ramps after the first ramp um, and have a changeover. I'm not going to get into that detail, but you can play with that on your own. 
then once you're running a test, the end of the test is critical. Generally, the criteria, if it's if you're going to do a failure test, so uh, ramping up till it fails, a rate of load criteria is the most useful, and the standard in this software is 40%. So that's a 40% change in the rate of loading. So if the uh, the sample fails and the the, the uh, force drops quickly, it'll stop the test for you. But maybe you're doing a compressive test where you don't want to get anywhere near the grips, or or maybe you want to stop that as a displacement for some reason. So if, uh, let's say, the extension goes beyond uh, 50 millimeters, I might want to stop. Uh, another one could be load control. So I could say if the load gets above, this is a 2,000 Newton load cell, so I have it under under a kilogram for so I'm going to go back here and use uh, SI because I'm used to working in Newtons. And then when I go under test control and my end of test, it'll have it in terms of Newtons. So I want to stop at, let's say, 1900 Newtons because I have a 2000 Newton load cell and I just want to be safe. Now we already have under load cell here limits of plus or minus 2,000 set in here electronically, but I could be a little more conservative if I uh, wanted to. And then when whatever of these criteria are tri triggered during the test, um, I have it set so it will stop and then prompt me and then return. You could also just have it stop and do a manual return, or you could have it automatically return, but I like to have it stop and then prompt me to return the specimen because I can check out, make sure there's nothing in the way, and have it return. There's also other options such as uh, specimen protect, which you can read about. Now you have to take data during your test, and in this case, it's set at 50 milliseconds to take data. Uh, that's going to be a lot of data, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down to uh, 100 milliseconds here. But in case there's a very fast change in force, I can also add another and so I can take data every, let's say, uh, there's a 2,000 Newton load cell, so two, is, two Newtons would be 0.1% of that load cell. Um, that's, that's plenty, that's actually below the, the uh, accuracy or linearity of the load cell anyway. So I could take data every two Newtons here, in addition to every 100 milliseconds. Now I could have it explain, display different things on the top. Here it's displaying extension and load. I could also have it uh, to tensile strain and uh, tensile stress and even some calculated parameters such as slope along the way. I can calculate during the test. I can also set uh, soft keys and soft keys can do things such as a balance and that would balance the load and, uh, and zero the load um, and when I click on that it'll do it for me uh, and I could also do a zero extension and, and those are up here uh, on the top, so we, I don't have to look for them uh, anywhere else. Uh, of course, I can also do it by uh, using these icons up here, but these are just uh, fast soft keys. On the frame itself, I can also um, I can also select different parameters of the frame and uh, on the the soft keys on the frame. This will be the first soft key on the frame. This will be the second soft key on the frame on the little controller. I can also define things with the grips, which I'm not going to do right now. Um, I'm not going to work with the workspace much here um, because it's not needed to run this test, and I'll get into that uh, in the next video. But uh, because every spe specimen could be different, I'm going to have a, the user input specimen label, the rate they want the test to go at. I already selected 20 millimeters per second uh, but that, or millimeters per minute, but that could be changed by the user. Um, I could also have number of units, um, choice of different units, and usually I will have the length so it can calculate strain for me, uh, the thickness, and the width of each sample before I test it. Uh, again, the results, tables, and the other displays I will talk about in the next video. Also, where do you export the data, I will talk about in the next video. Now, the test is going to be prompted, and it's going to tell me when I need to enter information. I'd like to do that um, before each test, 
Um, and then also I want it to stop and show me the workspace and the graphs after the test. And I can have, can have it prompting me many more times. Okay, so then we go on to actually doing the test. I'm going to save this template and I'm going to put it uh, under anywhere I want. Um, I can put it under this is my name, so I'll put it under my protocols and I'll call that leather tensile test. And now I can go ahead and run a test, and this is my sample one. I already said it's going to be at 20. Uh, I can measure the width, thickness, and length of my sample. I'll do that after I put a small tear load. Again, I've already balanced the load. I'm going to put a small tear load on. So after I have a little tear load on, I want to zero the extension. I can do that here or here. And you'll notice the extension says zero, the strain says zero. I don't want to re um, zero the load. I'll measure the dimensions uh, to save time right now. I'll just uh, jump ahead and enter what approximately they are. And then I will run the test after I put my safety stop. We have safety stop, safety shoot to put in place. I'll make sure my sample is tightly gripped. And I'll start the test. And you can wrap different things, which we will do in the next video. If you notice, the load is being read out here, and also the extension and the tensile strain and stress are being calculated automatically. And if it broke catastrophically, it would have stopped it sooner, but this broke slowly, um, but it eventually went to a 40% decrease. Now I can, it says remove specimen, then click OK to return to zero. I'm just going to return it to zero because I know I've already broken the piece of leather and the uh, cross it, the uh, grips will not hit each other. And that's the end of the video about the basic testing, uniaxial testing.